In this video, I paint Beauregard. Hello Bits Brood, it's Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here with the latest in our Critical Role painting miniature videos. So yeah, um, I'm painting Beauregard from the Mighty Nine in this video. Just going, as always, for a tabletop standard. Um, so these videos are sort of mainly aimed at sort of newer painters, but if you want to know what sort of colours to use, then um, these videos could also be helpful as well. So before we begin, as always, if you're new to the channel or just here for the Critical Role miniatures and you want to keep up to date with all our releases, then do feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. And all, as always, before we begin, just a massive shout out to all of our Patrons. And a big thank you to you guys for supporting the channel as well. If you want to know what our Patreon is all about, there's a link in the description down below. So let's get into painting Beauregard. So here we have the Beauregard miniature. And she's been primed in GW's Greyseer Primer, but you can use any primer that you so wish. So we're going to start by taking some Corvus Black. And this is to paint her trousers and her top. And I'll thin that out with just a little bit of water. Um, even with a little bit of water, this should cover the undercoat quite well. Even if you went with a black undercoat, of course being almost black itself, it should cover really well. So I'll just use the single coat here. So once that's dry, I'm going to take some Temple Guard Blue, and this is for all the blue parts of her cloven. Now this might seem like a really light blue, but don't worry, we are going to add the darker elements later on. I just decided in this case it would be easier to work up from the light to the dark rather than the other way around. So I'm applying it all over the blue areas. Again, I thinned out just a little bit. And if you had a darker primer, then you may wish to do two or three thin coats of this colour, but over the grey here, I just needed the one. So next we're going to take some Hoeth Blue and we're going to try and build up a little gradient here. So thin it down a little bit more than you normally would. And then we're just going to sort of glaze it over. As you can see it's really thin here so it's almost like a almost like a water consistency. But um, um, what you're going to do, if I can get my words out, is apply it over just over half of these areas starting from the top down and on the back I'm going to do it in reverse and then once that's dry do it again but not not as far down as before and that'll help you bring up a little gradient and I do about three or four coats like this and um, going further up with every coat and once you've done that you'll see you get this little sort of gradient going where it starts off lighter and goes darker and um, it's not as smooth as the transition I've got there but it works um, just as well so I'm going to get some McCrag Blue now and do it's essentially the same thing but obviously this time not going down as far as I did in the previous step so again I thinned it out I'm going to do several layers to so get a nice transition building up. Now you can see already we're getting quite a nice little effect going. So how many layers you do as well as up to you and um, just showing off the back here you can see that I've gone from light at the top to dark at the bottom. And you may find on these larger areas you want to do a few more coats than you do on the front just to build that transition up even better. And as you can see I sort of feather it out a little bit as I get to further to the top as well so that just helps with that transition. So once all these colours are done, they, they still look a little bit flat, so it's time to just add some definition to them. And that's with Drakenhof Nightshade, which I'm going to thin down uh, that 50-50 mix with some water. Or even better, you could use some medium. And that'll just sit in the shadows and just give them a little bit of definition, just so it doesn't look so flat. And I'm doing this over all the blue areas. Spread that around just so it doesn't pull up too much. You can see it if you put it on too heavy like I did there, that will pull up a little bit. So you can just take that away with your brush. And you know, you may have to do another coat if you find that's not strong enough. So I'm going to take some Mournfang Brown now. 
This is going to be for her boots and her staff. Again, I've just thinned out just a little bit of water, just so it flows nicely off the brush, and it covers pretty well being one of these silly little base paints. They all seem to cover pretty well over these lighter primers. And then we'll add just a little bit of depth to these areas with some Agrax Earthshade. So, um, I haven't diluted the Agrax in this case, I want it to be um, quite dark on the staff and on the boots. Just really bring out the details on them. So I'm using some more gas bone now, this is for the straps on the boots. Now in hindsight I think this colour is a bit too light, so if you have a slightly sort of darker or maybe like a light brown or something, just a darker colour than this because I find it just contrasts a bit too much on the boots. Um, it doesn't really match up too well with the artwork and um, yeah, so um, you may wish to do a different colour here. I stuck with it, just see how it would look. And it doesn't look terrible, but if you want to be more accurate to the artwork, um, you'd probably use a, a sort of a, a lighter brown than the Morn Fang. And you can see where it's dry here. Um, I'm not 100% happy with how they came out, but I'm going to crack on nonetheless. And I'm taking some Stegadon Scale Green, and this is for all the straps around her arms. So I really like this colour because it's like a dark turquoise colour, and it works really well for the, these areas. There's also just these little bands on her clothes there, just sort of hanging down. I'm also painting in this colour. So next I'm going to highlight these with some Sotec Green, again a nice turquoise colour. And it works as the ideal highlight for these areas. So with a fine tip on your brush and your paint thinned out, you just want to do lines of this. So you could hit just all the top ends or all the bottom ends of these if you so wish, rather than all the ends of the bands. That'll just give a nice impression of highlights. And next we're going to do her flesh and we're going to start with some Blood Reaver flesh. So both skin is darker than um, sort, of, sort of typical Caucasian flesh so she's got quite a nice sort of tanned look. And um, Blood Reaver flesh is just a perfect um, base for that. And then we can take some Bugman's Glow and we're going to layer this over the previous step. So painting most of her skin with this colour but just leaving the Blood Reaver flesh in all the deepest um, recesses. And I'll thin that out as I always do with flesh. Um, when you're painting skin it's a really good idea to have your colours quite thin. Um, just so, because there's a lot of detail and you don't want to obscure that with thick paint. So if you have to build up two or three layers then it's much better to do it that way. And as you can see I'm sort of building up on her arms there. So once that layer is done and dry we're going to take some Cadian Flesh Tone now and this is going to be to highlight her skin. Um, especially her face if the camera wants to focus on her. Um, but if you watch enough of these videos you'll know that I like to focus on the nose, um, the chin, the cheeks, uh, the eyebrows. I went a bit too heavy there and just had to wipe a little bit off. But um, yeah, just take your time on this step. I'm also going to highlight her abs as well. And of course, her fingers are quite important for this step. And just a little bit on her arms as well, just on them top edges. On her ears as well. So, all these little areas. And that'll just give you a nice highlight to her skin. And next I'm going to take some Rhinox Hide for her hair. Now there's not really a great deal much to say here, just paint her hair with Rhinox Hide. And then when it's dry I'm going to take some Steel Legion Drab and this will act as quite a nice highlight for her hair. And you see I ain't got the best tip on the brush there, I don't know um, what was up with it then but it's good enough just to highlight the hair, so just do sort of lines to sort of give the impression of where her hair is. Now this Steel Legion Drab could have been a good colour for the um, straps on her 
on her feet. So that might be a colour you choose to wish um, you wish to choose to use yourself. Um, Grey Knight Steel next is for the um, little bits of um, little hoops here, little chains or whatever they are. Just hanging down. Nah, that's all I'm going to do for them. And then, as always, I just paint the base with a band black, but you can do your base however you wish. But for D&D miniatures, I just like to have a solid black base. And um, I find that two or three thin coats will get a nice, flat, solid look. And then here is the finished Beauregard. So yeah, as I said, I'm not particularly happy with the straps on her feet, but I'm sure if they were a different colour, they would look a bit better. But yeah, really happy how that blue turned out, the transition from light to dark, although not the smoothest transition I've ever done, it still works really well I think, so um, I hope you guys too agree and I hope you do like the miniature. So yeah, um, thanks so much for watching, I believe Not The Brave is the next um, video, so I very much look forward to painting her. And if you have enjoyed this video then please do feel free to give it a thumbs up and leave any comments that you so wish down below. Um, if you've been painting some yourself, I'd love to hear how you've been getting on. So all I have to say is thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.